today we are going to begin our ceramic lily pads. We're, they have been, we built them in a class prior, uh, a few classes ago, obviously, because we had to fire them in the kiln. So what we have in front of us today looks a little bit different than what we had at the end of our last class building them. At the end of last class building them, they were gray, right? They're kind of wet. I said I had to let them dry out, so I did. Then I put them in the kiln, which is over behind the clay table over there. Okay. And that is like a super big oven that heats up our clay. And now they are hard. So they're kind of like a, it feels like a terracotta pot. They're dry, they're kind of a little rough. Um, but most importantly, they are now fragile. So if I were to drop this, it would break and there would be no saving it besides maybe super or Gorilla Glue, okay? Um, so you, when you are carrying these, are going to want to carry them with two hands. These are the first time they go into the kiln and they get fired from being wet clay. They come out and they are now called Bisqueware, B-I-S-Q-U-E dash wear. I don't know why, but I always think of Bisquick pancakes. I don't know why. It just kind of connects like that for me. So they are now called Bisquare, which means that all the moisture, a chemical process has happened in there. All the moisture has been removed and they are now fragile. They're kind of along the same lines of something like glass or, you know, hard pottery. So I pulled out some examples of different uh, lily pads. You're going to have the choice today. So we're gonna be painting these at least two days and then um, sealing them a third day. You're going to have the choice of lily pad color, either the lighter green or the darker green. Um, you are going to have the choice of painting the interior of your flower yellow today. If you want a yellow flower, which I think are really beautiful, um, we're going to paint the majority of it, but not all of it today, and still paint the um, bottom center part here. So I'll show you that part here in a second. I'm gonna move these guys out of the way, but this is like a red and green, and some of them are in better shape than others. This one hasn't even been sealed, so it doesn't have that shine. This one has been sealed. You see that like shine on there? This is an orange and yellow with the light base. Okay, pink. All right. So after the demonstration, I'm gonna call you to the clay table and you are going to get your lily pad and a piece of scratch paper and go back to your seat. Please, please, please do not carry your lily pad on your scratch paper like this. Have you ever seen the like um, paper towel commercials where they're showing you how strong their paper towel is and how the competition isn't that strong and they wet it and their grapes fall through the paper towel? This is, this is what I imagine happening. Anytime I see a kid carrying their stuff like this, okay? So carry it like this with thumbs on it or like this, I don't care, but get it to your seat safely. Somebody at your table is going to be responsible for getting paint. Another one is going to be responsible for getting water. The water is to wet your brush, switch over from the yellow, and to put your brush in at the end. The only colors your water should really be at any given point is yellow, okay? Because you're only that's the only paint that's getting washed out. There is going to be a super big brush and a smaller square brush for details. Okay, this is for painting large, large areas and this is for getting into the little nooks and crannies. All right. And I don't know if you caught me do that, but I was wringing out, taking out the extra water from my brushes because we don't really need it in there. Uh, we are going to be using temper paint, which is uh, basically a powder-based paint. We used it with our cardinal paintings. So it is the same type of paint. 
Now, you said with the cardinal paintings, Mrs. Shardle, if I get those wet, then it's going to all run. That is why we are going to put the sealant on it day three so that we don't have to worry about it um, coming off of here. So the first thing that we're going to do is our yellow. Yellow is the lightest color in the color wheel. It is the one that always gets kind of bullied. Now, if you want the center of your flower to be yellow, so you are going to have the choice uh, this year of pink, red, purple, and yellow. If you want an orange, see me about it, we can get you a container. But we're gonna take our smaller brush and I'm going to basically wiggle that in all these little nooks and crannies on the inside of my flower here. Okay. And I'm going to take, let me zoom in a little bit. So I have it in all the circles, making sure, and I'm gonna pull it up the walls of my flower. Doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna take another color and bring it down tomorrow, but I want the yellow to be nice and dry so it doesn't get um, overpowered when we do the other colors tomorrow. So, easy, right? Next, I'm gonna clean out my brush. Remember, scrape it. You guys can't even see that. Scrape it along the edge to pull the extra water out. Don't tap it or else you'll have those water speckles going everywhere making a mess. I'm going to, I think, do dark green. And I'm still gonna use my square brush because I'm going to go ahead and get in close to the lily pad today, so close to the flower. I've noticed in classes, kids being afraid to pick up their lily pads and them just trying to paint with it on the table. You can paint with it on the table, but for something like this, you're going to have to pick up your lily pad, take my brush, lay it flat and get in there as close as you can. I'm kind of like bouncing it in there and pulling it out. Now I may very well get some on my flower, which I did, that's okay. That's why we're painting the lily fad first. And tomorrow we will put our other color on there. You want to make sure that you are getting in all these veins that you put in with your pencil. Or I'm sorry, no, not your pencil, your wooden needle tool. So I'm kind of turning my paintbrush sideways to do that. All right. If you have little specks of clay come off, like, you see that little guy there? On my brush. Just put it on your scratch paper. Uh, sometimes that happens. If I can't really get into a spot, I'm just kind of like wiggling my brush downward, All right? So now I got the majority of it covered. I'm gonna take my larger brush to save myself some time and hassle. I want to get everything covered, including the sides. We are not covering the bottom. So you see how quickly this is going to go with the large brush. You wanna make sure that your coat's nice and uh, even, I would say two coats, but you don't really need two coats if you get a real good, nice, solid first coat on there. 
Make sure that you're not seeing any of your sides. I'm kind of like swinging my brush around the side of that. I'm making a mess on my scratch paper. I probably will get some paint on the bottom. Try to keep it out of the paint, if at all possible. When you are done, you're going to put your brush back in the water to be carried to sink one. At the end of class, these are all going to get capped so that we can save them from day to day and they don't dry out. You're going to carry this over to the clay table. The scratch paper can go in the garbage. Do not take this over to the clay table because in doing so, you're putting paint, wet paint on your scratch paper on the bottom. Ooh, I forgot the one part of that. You're putting wet paint on the bottom of your lily pad. We're gonna put them on the table and let them dry for the day. Tomorrow we'll come back, we'll paint the um, outside of our flowers. And then the following day, we will um, be sealing these. Okay. Questions on this? Yes. 